pull it up on there, which is just close. So that's that. <laughs> Do we know if it's working? Yeah, we got one viewer. Okay. Hello, everyone. I'm going to wait a little bit for people to hop on. Sorry, I was a little delayed. I tried to walk myself out of my shop um, because of technology now. Boy. You get, or I don't necessarily have to, I'm sorry, I'm trying to log into multiple things at once. Um, anyway, you have to put that into. Okay. Anywho, I basically locked myself out of my shop because I didn't have to have my keys with me and I went to my other shop and forgot them there. So, yeah, I was running a little behind today. Anywho, I'm glad to be here. As you can see, I'm going to be doing the Tiger King. Um, a few weeks ago, a few weeks ago, we did this color. I just retouched it up yesterday. I reshaped him with uh, the Kenshi flash clippers. I used to get 10, which I feel like is a little bit shorter than a regular 10 just as an FYI, uh, but I like how short it is when I'm doing a dye like this. I mean, it's easy enough to get attention. Uh, because I'm, I'm doing really detailed work because we're going to be doing the black on uh, Joe Exotic's jacket today. So when doing really detailed work like that, you want to have shorter hair because wherever I paint is exactly how it's going to lay. The longer length that you have for hair, the more um, give there is because that hair obviously can lay whichever way it wants to when it has all that length. So, what we've done is I mixed up some of uh, Opa's Innocent Blue with their Color Dilution Cream, and I did, um, I did, I would say probably like one drop, I did two different dilutions essentially. I did one drop of the Innocent Blue with probably like, if, if we're using this as a measurement, probably just to where it covers the bottom. Um, and then for one of them, and then I did another dilution with two drops of the Innocent Blue. So as you can see, there's kind of a variegated color. I wanted to have, because it shimmers, the jacket shimmers, and we've got glitter and stuff too that we'll be playing around with. What? Is it working okay? Uh, well, the camera is sideways. The camera is sideways? Yeah, see how it's viewed? Yeah. yeah. Don't know how to fix that. Can you guys let me know if the camera is sideways <coughs> to you as well? Oh, it just fixed it. Oh, and then it went back. Okay. Let's see I, if that works. We're trying to figure this out. Um, I apologize. Technology is lots of fun. There's almost an overwhelming amount of options. So, back to what I was talking about. Innocent Blue did two different mixing. One drop of the innocent blue and then like two drops of the innocent blue with about the same amount of the color dilution cream because I want it darker and lighter to have that, you know, kind of shimmer when you see this jacket. So that's why you can see that so there are some spots that are darker and some that are lighter. It just kind of helps create that contrast. And then originally I was going to try like a gr not gray, but like a silver color for this part that is on um, his shoulder sleeves. You can't see that. Uh, let me. Okay. There. I'm just going to fix it so that we can see that. Um. And then I thought to myself, well, he kind of has like that natural silvery color anyway, so I think it looks, that'll look pretty good once we get the pattern on there. And then, of course, I use um, Opa's Glorious Yellow with quite a bit. As you can see, it's well used. The bottle is very colorful now. Um, and I use that for all of this. And I use probably like three drops of this and then quite a bit of the color dilution cream because he has, as you can see, a kind of not so good bleach job <laughs> on his hair, and that's exactly what I wanted him to have. Um, so I cut his hair to have a mullet. Of course, you gotta have a mullet. And then we did the Loyal Brown from Opaz as well. And these are all the permanent line of dyes for his mustache. So I shaved all of this. He used to be a show dog, so he's used to being shaved short. Um, I did all of this with the Kenshi's on their 40 length. And um, as you can see, it seems totally fine, doesn't bug him at all. And so I, of course, we had to have the, I think it's called a handlebar mustache. Um, and so I had to shave this out. I feel like that really completed the look to get it close like Joe's. So, all right, you guys ready to get into the pattern on the jacket? Are you ready for that? Great. 
Okay, so I've already grabbed the super black. I have like a few of these. Um, and I'll show you guys. It is a one-to-one -one mixture. So you're gonna combine this number one with this number two. So whatever I use for Like I said, he is a show doc, so he's very used to me doing the next thing on the table. And dance around in it. <laughs> Probably should grab something else to open this with. This is not one to open. Can you put that in? Don't use scissors. <laughs> Why? The groomer in me cringes a little bit. That pen right there with the tip. This one? The, either one. Doesn't matter. Something a little more closer than four times of mine. Uh, oh, yeah. that worked right away. So, scissors would have worked. Of course, they would have worked, <laughs> but they're not the better choice. Don't use your scissors for that kind of stuff, guys. You probably already know that, though, if you're watching this video. Now, I also have a tray, Old Paws makes like a green tray, yesterday. But for something that I'm going to use this much dye on, I, I have an individual cup to hold more. So, just have that. Um, one thing to keep in mind that once I've squeezed, it's still going to come out a little bit. So just keep that in mind. Hey, you're doing it, mister. Um, I, I did a tiger yesterday with the super black, and I forgot that it still comes out. Kicking off camera. Huh? Um, I used Opa Super Black as well when I did his boots and his tail. I love this black because it stays and holds its color very, very well. Okay, so I'm mixing it up. Kind of bent this one. Mixing it up. You want to get a nice mixture. Can you lay down? brushes from Michaels and I really really like them. They were doing buy one get one half off. Um, so I bought quite a few but I obviously don't need all of them for this. And then it's good to make sure that you wipe your brush off to get the stuff that actually didn't mix in and just stuck to your brush in between all the bristles. And then, yeah so anytime I go to do a creative room I always like to have some kind of reference. Um, usually it's me looking it up on my phone because what I want to do get a reminder of the pattern that I'm aiming for. So I'm going to take a look at his jacket and it to me this kind of looks like a if it was a river flowing that's kind of what I see. So that's how I'm going to interpret it on his jacket. I like to start up here so as you can see I with um, a mullet there's always that underneath it's shorter and then there's that part that lays over and covers that so we're going to start up here. jacket for reference. Okay, I think we're ready to get started. So I'm just going to kind of start up here. I have this thicker brush that I'm going to do for some. You going to lay down? Come on, you can lay down. Hector, you going to sit? And again, I shaved him nice and short with a pen so that I will be able to More detail. This is quite a bit smaller. I don't know if you guys can see it very well, but it's a lot easier to get the detail. This black takes a little while to change color, so it takes a little bit to be able to tell exactly where you're putting your dye. But once it's 
starts to do it, it's awesome. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask away. Um, there's actually a glare right on that. I can't see any questions. Symmetry, it's really important to keep your spine aligned and make sure your dog is nice and straight. Do you have any questions so far, Joe? Uh, not yet. Okay. How's that? So oh, much better. Okay. Oh, hi, Aunt, is it Andrew or Andrea? I'm not really sure. Hi, Chelsea. Okay, sorry. I apologize again that this is after Halloween. Um, we had to change up our plans a little bit because I wasn't feeling well. And I'm going to constantly just go back to here back there. Back to the world. So because we're vertical, mm -hmm. uh, I can't get everything in the same shot. I probably okay. could now, now that he's sitting still. I am a big proponent of working with the dogs. So if they're like wiggling on you or whatever, um, I just you know, work with them as much as I can. Kind of, I like to get my hand on them to be able to good boy, to more predict how they're gonna move. Um, for me, that works well. Can you see this? Yeah. I mean, your hand is in the yeah, way, yeah. so. As you can see, it's starting to turn color on his body. This color, this black, is the only one that has to process for 40 minutes. So keep that in mind as you're doing it. Some people, if they've got like multiple, um, multiple colors that they're doing, they'll do the black first. I like to do the black last because I can cover anything up that I mess up <laughs> with black. Because black, black covers up all of it. It's pretty awesome that way. Victoria says hi. Hi, Victoria. Tell Vicky thank you for coming to my rescue and getting me back into my shop today. Because I'm a dork. She finally found her comfy spot. Always good to err on the side of caution when it comes to doing your dyeing. Um, I'm gonna make sure I don't get too symmetrical here because it is gonna freak out all over the place. Um, but I do, I like always drawing to symmetry. So it's kind of hard for me to wrap my head around the abstract sometimes. But it's really cool. seen the Tiger King. That was a trip, wasn't it? Anybody see any uh, real exotics for Halloween? I actually did a dye job yesterday on a big old mastiff named Blush. And I used this super black again. I love this little detail on his artwork. It's pretty awesome. What do you say, Trevor? It is very awesome. <laughs> it's like the best one. And the nice thing about a kind of abstract pattern like this is you don't have to do the dye. Like there's a certain precision to it, but a lot of it Together, like I do here. Um, maybe I'll even throw a heart 
And you've never used the glitter before? Nope, I've never used the glitter before. They also make a glitter gel, which we're going to be using too. So I think that'll help really uh, solidify the look. I was pretty bummed though, because I couldn't find uh, a good, you know, eyebrow piercing for him. A lot of people were asking me about that. Which was a huge. Can everybody hear? Yeah, how's the volume? Can you guys hear me okay? As I blabber on and on. Yeah, you could just be like a talking, talking head. head. Awesome. They said they can hear. Oh, good. That is a relief. Yeah, that's a good thing. Yeah, that's a different to do for Halloween because this year I just feel like has been kind of a different year and a crazy year. So my friend Amy actually suggested the Tiger King and I thought, oh, how perfect is that? This has been a nutso year. Let's do something that's just a little out there. If somebody wanted to do this exact dye, how could they do that? Um, well, I would probably start by watching the video. Uh, but actually, Opaz has made this groom a value pack on their website. So you can go on there and you can um, just look for their value pack on their site and actually use the code FUN at checkout 
if you get a discount. Um, and you can just buy the whole set and you're good to go. Like, I, the only thing that you can't necessarily buy, I think, is going to be brushes. So I would just pick some up uh, at your local store. You can probably find some really good brushes at an art store, I would assume. I personally went to Michael's, but I'm in Alaska, so my shopping is limited compared to other places. But yeah, so go on to the Opal website, look for their value pack. They've also got some really cool value packs, like if you wanted to do um, Spider-Man. And then I think they've got there's another one, Scale Tubal Mini. That sounds kind of familiar. And in that pack is included the black and the blue. Someone that wants to do something really, really fun for Christmas, and they're super excited about that. So Victoria said they, she can hear me really good, but you're a little quiet. Oh, well, that's probably because I need to be closer to you. Yeah, why don't you just move it closer? Then I miss. That's a loud mouth, I'm sure. You can't see. The Tiger King as well, but the picture. Yeah. Most people have seen it by now if they're going to. <clears throat> so I'm kind of keeping in mind that I just want to paint like river stream on his body. They're like at first my thought was, oh okay, those are like abstract tiger stripes. They're not really tiger stripes in my eyes. I mean to each his own, but they don't look like tiger stripes to me. Not not when This dog had such beautiful, long, flowing hair, and before we chopped it off, we painted him like a rainbow, and it was amazing. I'm not gonna lie, I miss that hair, but I'm sure his mommy doesn't miss the maintenance. So, Opaz has the scallop poodle, uh, pumpkin. Oh, uh, yeah, like for, you, that's for bleaching, right, I think? Yeah, I remember watching that one. Uh, Gear Tiger King, and then Spider-Man. Yeah, and I love that they did, like, a value pack. Instead of having to go on the website and be like, okay, what do I need again? You know, and maybe missing out on ordering something. You can just go there, it's like a one-click, one-stop, order it, and you're good to go. And whatever you, if you end up, like, you know, dogs are all supposed to be different sizes, obviously. Um, you can save it for later and use it on a different groom. I have a huge variety of opals out there because I obviously live in Alaska, so for me to be able to get this stuff, it takes a while to ship it to me. And so I like to just have it on, on hand because you never know when a customer last minute, um, can we do this for whatever birthday? And sometimes I may have to tell them, no, I can't because I don't have whatever. So I just try and plan ahead. I try and buy in bulk because that saves me shipping. And that's something I have to pay for all the time with where I live. So yeah, anytime you can do a value pack, like what they've got going on for Halloween, do it. And use the code FUN. I forgot to get stuff located next to this. Can you guys start to see it coming to life? This website's ever? Yeah. It's a little symmetrical on his leg, right there. Right down there? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I think it's more like it's going to be there. Or maybe like a little bit. This one. Are you going to move both? Of course you're going to move both. Oh, look at that. 
me and stretched it out for me. I like the upside down C uh, that you did on the body. Back here? No, oh, right by oh, it. Yep, that? that. I have another one over here. Oh. Yeah, so I'm sure you're trying to hint that I should do another one. Yeah. Like that? Sure. I think the hardest thing is like envisioning all of it coming together, you know. I've never been a super artsy person when it came to like drawing or anything. Um, it's very hard for me to visualize. But the more that I get into creative grooming and just play around with stuff, I'm like, oh, okay, I can, I can see that. So anyone who's just thinking about getting into it, get, just, just do it. Just get started. I started with my own dog. And I obviously like to use friends' dogs. Um, How well did that first dog turn out? <laughs> <laughs> that was like 10 years ago. Um, it was not that good, but I wasn't using the greatest products. Um, I think I used like Manic Panic, which can work just fine for some people, but I was doing my rough poly and I tried to make her. I think I tried to give her tiger stripes and mm -hmm. they turned out like orange, not black. <laughs> she looked like she was going to jail. <laughs> or she had just gone back from jail. Like it was uh, yeah. Struggle, but um uh, I can't open the one. Okay, so you can see it kind of coming together. Oh yeah, that looks super cool on the camera. Um Yeah, it looks good. It's gonna look super awesome with the glitter. Oh yeah. Okay, and so I kind of started to transition it a little bit in the middle of his body. That's where that symmetry comes in mind. You know, again, this is like abstract. So it doesn't have to be perfect. You kind of don't want it to be perfect, actually. Um, but I did kind of just start to do some transitionary stuff because that is just how I roll. That's how my brain works. I like it to be a nice, smooth transition. I like to talk sweet to the dogs. I don't have to be too sweet. <laughs> oh, yes I am. So we can, you can see we've got some fatter parts here and then I kind of taper it and get a little skinnier. Um, I kind of feel like that's what his jacket did a little bit and, and it kind of just goes wherever it wants to go uh, on the jacket. I don't necessarily think there's a rhyme or reason to it. But that's again why something like this is kind of fun because you can, whoa, play around with it. <laughs> You scare me, dude. Feel free to ask any questions that you guys might have. Very sensitive. I don't mind at all. See, I know he's not quite in his comfortable position yet, so I'm keeping that in mind. Um, so I re dyed all of this yesterday, like I was saying earlier. And he decided he wanted to shave and get yellow hair and there and there. Ah, oh, you would. So now I'm just gonna cover it up with black because why not? Come on, Nicole. It's good to alternate the colors, blend it all around. Abstract art, I love it. Yesterday I was working on this tiger, and um, <laughs> I'm not biased, but I proud of myself. And I was joking with my girls, I was like, it looks like Africa. <laughs> and they're like, I don't see the continent of Africa. I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> I mean, it looks like it came straight out of Africa. It looks so cool. I mean, I was in Alaska, guys, so it's a little over the discounts. Come on. Love this black. Isn't that cool to watch the transformation? It's so. Are you comfy like that, Hector? Yes, he is. Wow, I've got all this tone. So, Michaela asks, how do you get the color so vibrant every time? Uh, I do color, it doesn't come out so bright. So Michaela, let me ask you, what are you using color-wise? 
And how long do you leave it on for? As you can see, I'm not using any filters or anything. This is just a Facebook Live. Um, I don't really like, I'm kind of old style. I don't like to use filters and make my work look different than it actually looks. one with a black terrier and the owner wanted to dye the top of the hair blue. My question is what would you recommend to do to hair and how to do it because his hair wasn't thick. Um, I can't see all that. Can you hit some more or just read this one? I love these questions guys. So I'll start with what you started with which was you got a dog terrier. Um, it's black and they want a blue top knot it sounds like. So what I would do in that case, and I'll try and show you this at the end because I have it, but I would use actually the Opaz Lightning Cream. And I just used that on this guy's brother a few weeks ago to kind of test it out and see. And I, it worked great. It lightened him really well. Um, another thing I would suggest to you, Melly, are you that right? Yes. Okay. Um, Melly, is I would use that lightning cream. Sorry, I'm getting distracted. Um, and leave it on for the allotted time. And then I would, well, actually, uh, before you do that, check out in this group Lauren Piston's video on bleaching. And that's the pumpkin one we were talking about. She did. Um, a really cool informational video on bleaching. She's got a wealth of information there. I would definitely check that out uh, because it's really good to just learn all the little things about bleaching. And you want to leave a space three days, 72 hours, um, in between bleaching the hair or lightening it, whatever you want to call it, they're the same, and actually putting the blue color on. Now going back to you, Michaela, you said you're using the Opie Semi Permit. I, ha I have the whole line of the Opie Semi Permit, but I have yet to use it. Um, I really, really like the permanent one, and maybe that's the difference in the brightness. Um, I just find that the permanent is awesome. <laughs> and I love bright colors. Go ahead, Kayla, you're good. She also says that she leaves it on for 15 to 20 minutes, okay. and we leave it on for like a half an hour. Yeah, yeah, so. I like to do at least 20 minutes. Um, sometimes I get impatient, or if you have an impatient dog, obviously then you leave it on for a little bit uh, shorter time. Yeah, so maybe that's the difference as well, just the time mm -hmm. and it's sitting on And then you gotta keep in mind what kind of dog hair that you're using it on. Different hairs take to color differently. Like we did a Frenchie one time and I tried Opaz, I tried Crazy Liberty. Man, it was just, this coat was not taking the color very well. And we were doing um, Stitch from Milo and Stitch. And so we needed blue, you know, and we needed a good blue. I mean, I think we ended up trying it like three different times. And I ended up going to Sally's and getting Manicanic. The nice thing about it is, so I've used Manicanic before, that's kind of how I got started in creative grooming. And it can totally work. I always had issues though with it bleeding. Um, the nice thing about Stitch though is that it needs to be an all over color, so bleeding doesn't really matter. Um, that's something to keep in mind. There are a bunch of products out there. I really like the Opus because I've literally never had it bleed into any other color. Where I dye it is where it will take that color and that's it. So that's something I love about this company and how, how their stuff works. And Andrea's on here, and she's a wealth of information to answer any questions for you guys, too. She works with the company as well. Um, did I miss other questions? Yeah, so I would just try your um, going from the semi permanent to permanent and see how, how well that works. Can you guys see this okay? Or is that Not on that side. Angle? I'm trying to figure that's probably not the best angle. Do you see it coming to life? I love it when it starts to look like this color because I can see the heat, see where I put it. 
Michaela says, okay, thank you. No problem. If you have any other questions too, or if you feel like I needed to explain it a little more, just let me know. Cannot see that. Oh, well, I'm anal and I can totally see it. <laughs> okay, you are looking so cool. I love this dog. He's so cute. And if you are interested, um, I think the best dogs to do this kind of stuff on are retired show dogs because they're so used to being groomed. They like the attention typically. Uh, so if you're like wanting to get into creative grooming, you know your friends have any dogs who are like cool or whatever, you know, try to go to a dog show. Just meet people, um, get involved, and just watch, take it all in. I mean, I show dogs, so I'm a little biased in that. I grew up in the dog show world. But that's where you're gonna find your really well-trained dogs, and you might even meet a breeder who places a puppy and the owner, um, you know, the dog's retired or whatever, and uh, they don't want to get into showing, obviously, but they want to die. There you are. They just do it. I actually started off doing dice for free, like for my friends, to try and build my portfolio, repertoire, whatever you want to call it. And it's taken me, I mean, like I said, I got started about 10 years ago, so it's taken me a long time. But I love that a company like Opaz is doing what they're doing to try and encourage groomers to get out there and try this stuff, you know? Because um, it's fun. Can you find yourself in like a grooming funk? Try something like this. This is a great outlet. Question? Just for the, I don't care about how long we go over. I'm going to walk in around my neighborhood tonight. <laughs> 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 oh, please do a video of that. Honestly, Victoria, we need to make like a really cool video of him romping around with Blush, which is the dog that I did the tiger on yesterday. Oh, yeah, it's gonna be funny. That's that's the stuff that really reignites my passion for grooming is doing something like that. Because we all go through funks, you know. Sometimes it's just like oh, people really don't take care of their dogs. Um, there are a lot of people who obviously do a great job, but that's just not the reality of everyone. And. So if you find yourself being frustrated for whatever reason, the job's just hard, it takes a lot of patience, whatever the reason is, try and think of what would make you happy. And for me, that is exactly what I'm doing right now. I enjoy creating for me. I enjoy like, oh my god, this just looks so cool. You know? And then power of social media is amazing. It's it's a crazy world, but it's a really cool one if you know how to use it. And that's something that I've been learning. I feel like I'm behind the times when it comes to that. I revamped my Instagram. I am now the groomer gal. So if you want to follow me on Instagram, I'm trying to be better about that and posting stuff that I do. I'm getting with all you cool kids, or shall I say, you cool cats and kittens out there. <laughs> and I'm just sure. Uh, I don't know if you guys want any background information on me. But I am 29 years old. I, like I said, I grew up in the dog show world. I still show dogs. I have Collies um, and Aussies and a Siberian Husky and an English point. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, I mean, I love it. I obviously have been doing it since I could walk. I grew up doing junior handling and competed. Since I was 10, back in the day, you had to be at least 10 to do it. Now you can start at 9. Um, if any of you have kids and like, are thinking something fun for your kid to get involved in, I apologize for this barking dog in the background. She's probably picked that up a noise. Uh, but junior handling is a great way for them to build confidence and learn how to find a passion with their dog. I mean, it kept me out of trouble, not that I was really prone to getting into trouble. I was kind of one of those kids that absolutely feared getting into trouble. <laughs> like, I only went to the principal's office to sign a group of books. Because it stressed me out to not, not be doing the right thing. So anyway, yeah, I grew up 
doing junior handling and I enjoyed it. I like had a blast. I showed my quality in juniors. Um, but it wasn't always a quality that I was showing, and I think that actually made me a better handler in the end. You know what? This is an electric table. I don't know why I'm bending over. I'm feeling my back. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Um, and this Yeah, I, I basically got to, well, I'm going to be showing whatever is going to the dog show. So I could call always have their hair the whole time. They do shed, you know. And I had brought collies. I still do. Um, and, yeah, I went and competed at Westminster. I competed at Yukonuba. There were over 240 kids there. And I actually made it down to the final 12, which was amazing. I was 14 at the time. That was a whirlwind of a trip because I'm done. Um, I remember going to stack my dog for the show and I was literally shaking. I was so nervous because I'd never been to a big show like that. I mean, 14, I remember 200 kids. I was like, oh my gosh, I don't stand a chance. And then my sister was there and she was like, just relax and show your dog. And so by the third day, which was the actual Yukonuba show, I finally listened and got out of my own head. And I did just that. I relaxed. And we made it down to the final 12. So I'm just like cradling his leg here. Trying to find a nice comfy position for him. A lot of dogs don't like their feet being touched. So yeah, my dad, my sister, and I, we all show dogs together. We show all breeds of dogs. Um, travel down to the state. That's something us Alaskans say, down to the states. <laughs> and it's, it's been a lot of fun. It's been a really good family thing that we've all enjoyed doing. It's a good hobby to have. Melly asks, what uh, what do you use to dye the blue back? So for the blue back, not blue black, blue back, I used this innocent blue color. And I did about, I did two different shades or variations, whatever you want to call it, of the, the okay. I'll just go one at a time because that I think makes it easier. Um, first I did one drop of the innocent blue into like a mixing, mixing container. And then I did enough color dilution cream to like fill up the bottom of it. And then I mixed it all up. And then I did another one that I used two drops of innocent blue to make this one a little darker and about the same of the color dilution cream. That's why this is out so you guys can see what I used. You can't see that actually. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and It worked great. I wanted to have that contrast of two different colors because I wanted his shirt to like, or I wanted basically to accentuate that shimmer. And so by having one darker to contrast the lighter, um, I figured that that would help to accentuate it. And it definitely did. Especially now that you see it under here, I think it does a really good job at highlighting where it needs to highlight. I'm sorry for Dixie. She's a dog. This is a dog for me, They can't handle barking dogs. She's just barking at the wind. And that's... Yeah, that sounds like her. <laughs> so another thing that I think sometimes people forget is, you know, when you're taking pictures and everything, um, don't forget the inside of the lights. Because you can see those in pictures. And if they're missing that color, and it should probably be there, and then it's just kind of a bummer, you know? Like, for me, I want, it, I want that full room, like that full, awesome image. Oh, my God. And if, if it's missing, it just, it just doesn't work. So I try and remember, like, do 
most of the game being started away. <laughs> Pretty easy to forget, so. Melly asks, so the dilution cream is to lighten the color? Yes, so these colors are super bright. I also used the dilution cream to do his yellow because I didn't want yellow hair. Because um, I know Joe Exotic kind of has yellow, but he's also blonde, not quite that yellow. And yes, the color dilution cream, which comes in the kit if you want to do, like, if you want to do the Joe Exotic um, dye. You can totally get that because it'll come in the kit. But they sell it separately as well, and it can tone down any color that you want to tone down. And it works great, as you can see. Like, that innocent blue is way more blue when it comes out of the bottle versus this more pale color that we have going on. So I've been kind of bouncing all around him. Um, because he just kind of starts to get wiggly. The nice thing is, is I've been brewing this dog for a long time. So I know his little quirks. And he knows mine. If you already feel like your color though um, is a little on the duller side when you're using the semi permanent, then maybe you would just go in between using the permanent dyes and the semi permanent. Melia asks, what's the name of the cream to bleach? Cream to bleach. Oh, um, I think it's called Opa's Lightning Cream, but I will definitely show you afterwards. Um, it's back there. Oops, I don't know if you want to grab it. It's in the little the cup looking stuff. I want to go lighter and then, uh, or this actually. Isolation cream. Yeah, so isolation cream, you don't, no, I don't. And I will tell you guys what it is though. Here's uh -huh. the isolation cream. Okay. And then this is. This is what we're talking about. Okay, so this is hair lightening cream. Comes in a little thing like this. This is basically bleach. Um, and it, it has the instructions on it, um, all that good stuff. Oh, Andrea, uh, put, a, put a link in. Oh, perfect. Good job. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, I can <laughs> I know I can, but I know his patience is going to run out too. Um, and then another product that they make that I really like, especially if you are not super confident in what you're doing and you have issues with color bleeding, like, you know, like, had issues with his tail. Um, I would use their color isolation cream, and that is exactly what it sounds like. It's going to prevent color from getting anywhere that you don't want it to get. So, I mean, a lot of people use cholesterol, conditioner. I never really have a lot of success with that stuff um, because I don't know, maybe I just got it everywhere. I don't it's kind of soupy. But the isolation cream, I saw, it was actually, I think Lauren Christian used it underneath the base of his tail, which is obviously, you know, a great idea. So his dog just plant their tails down at their natural position when they're relaxed. And if you've done color at the base of the tail, you're going to get it everywhere. So I think it's a great idea to cover up the bum uh, and just keep it from getting where you don't want it to get. I also use, I've used tinfoil, I've used saran wrap. Uh, clean wrap. I've used a lot of different things. It kind of depends on the hair that I've got as to what I'm going to use. You are the best of choice. I love your questions, by the way. They're very good. They're awesome. Thoughtful. Thought-provoking. Yesterday I made the mistake of grabbing him after I'd done the tiger and I still had my gloves on, so he had a couple little black dots. <laughs> I was just, I was like, oh, well, that's okay, because I'll just use those in my pattern. And then now, it's nice. It's looking pretty good. Sometimes if you're like 
like thinking in your own head about how something looks, just take a step back. Take a step back, look at all the news, and take a look. I can see it in the camera. Oh my god, that looks so cool! <laughs> Sorry guys. <laughs> it's different when you're right here looking at it, but I can see it on there. That's so cool! Ooh, like actually coming to life. Oof. I was a little nervous. Sometimes it's like, you know, go big or go home. And I, well, I could have been going home real fast. This didn't turn out. <laughs> Ooh. But I wanted to push myself. I think, you know, life's all about chances, opportunities. I was going to go live with you guys. I'm trying to do something cool that you haven't seen before, that I haven't seen before. Millie asks, how much time do you have to wait to apply the black uh, striping, I'm assuming, uh, uh, after you did the blue on the body? Okay, so I wouldn't necessarily, like the only thing, so you put the blue on, right? And that has to sit for at least 20 minutes. So um, then I rinse it all off and I would dry him. He can still be a tiny bit damp. Obviously his hair is nice and short, so being a little bit damp is not going to matter. Um, and then I would get started right away with the black. You might even like mix it up ahead of time to save yourself some time. Uh, because that black's got to sit for 40 minutes. So I personally like to do color first and then black afterwards. I don't know if you were on here earlier, but for me, the black, because it's going to go over anything that I want it to or need it to, um, I can co cover up any mistakes that I made. Um, and this, for this, I mixed up quite a bit of black. I didn't even use the whole bottle yet. Um, and so I think I'm only going to need probably this one. But that's something to keep in mind. You know, did your dog have long hair, short hair, whatever? Because that's going to affect the process time too and the application time. I mean, it just affects everything. It obviously takes longer to apply I kind of give him my chest to prop on if he wants. So I like this just kind of keeps your dog as comfy as possible. Scheduling for the color a different day. Like, obviously, in him, I had a couple weeks in between. Uh, but, you know, keep in mind the dog you're working with, their patience, their comfort, all of that. And if you have to bring them in a different day, then just be transparent with the owner in what that dog can require. I had a customer a few weeks ago wanting to do like a pearl necklace around her dog, and this dog is like a total wiggle room. Uh, and so there was absolutely no way. Like, I would love to tell her yes, but I'm not going to lie to my customer and say, oh yeah, we can do that, and then try it, and it turns out terrible. Like, that's never a good idea. Um, so we compromised and did a flower on her tissue, because <laughs> that's the only position she would just kind of sit and hang out, and even then that was a struggle. Um, but that's, that's the best kind of compromise we could come up with, because... Yeah, you got to remember the dog you're actually working with and what they're going to be good for and tolerant of. She's also, like, had some, the dog has some vision issues and stuff, too, so she's, it's just not working at that point, you know? Another thing to keep in mind is the power of your social media. When, if you want, if you want to get more into creative grooming, take pictures, show people what you've been doing. You know, 
start with your dog, start with your friend's dog, whatever, and post that on your Facebook, your Instagram, whatever. Tag, tag Opaws. They love having their work, their dyes represented. Um, because, you know, it's advertising for them too. And it's advertising for you. Why not? Melly asks, the blue goes on the hair or the body? What do you mean? I think she's referring to uh, the blue actually dyeing the skin. Oh, I'm okay. not positive. So he's super short. Um, he still has hair though. I shaved him with a 10. Um, so it will partially, I'm sure, color his skin too. But like if I were to shave him with a 30, I don't think he's gonna have super blue skin. Um, cause I can see this white underneath. So it's definitely dyeing the hair. I would say more than anything. Does that answer your question? Does that make sense to you, Trevor? Yeah. Okay. Um, and I was just guessing on her actual question. So. That was Melly's question. Okay, so that answered, that answered it. Yes. Good. You have awesome questions, by the way. I appreciate that. And I'm more than willing to answer them. Or point you in the direction of someone who can if I cannot. So now I'm just kind of going back through. I've obviously got 40 minutes, so it's the process. So I'm just kind of going back through and just twisting up anything that I think needs to be a little tested. Do you charge your phone? <laughs> okay, just making sure. Um, I don't know if you can see it very well, but I am using an angled tip brush, and I find that that really helps me to get um, the fine lines that I want. Get that wind sticking more like this. Oh, you are. You might have a little character, but it's not fully trimmed how I want it to be trimmed. That's another thing, too. I've left hair a little long before on some dogs because I knew that, like, maybe I was going to mess up or whatever. And I was like, I can clean that up after I chop or once I chop the hair off. So it'll be pretty awesome. I love it. All right, so we've got 40 minutes for this to process. Um, I don't, you are just really jump on there. <laughs> I don't know that I want to, well, I don't know, do you guys want me to stay on here for 40 minutes and answer all your questions? Because I'm more than happy to. I mean, I can talk for days. You just can't show up. Um, and yeah, fire them up, man, ask away. Let's see, we're at three o'clock. Yeah, three. So we have a little bit of a wait time. Um, I also got the smock from Opaz. Oh, you can't see that when you do oh, that. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I got the smock from Opaz, which is really cool because it crisscrosses on the back. So I am a very small size person. Um, and it obviously adjusts to fit because it also uh, ties in the back, too. 
But these are all adjustable, and so it can get way bigger and fit someone who's, you know, a lot bigger. So. Not a size zero? Yeah, not a size zero. <laughs> So earlier you commented uh, that you leave hair long, mm -hmm. um, just in case you screw up. But uh, we learned that it's also good to maybe go short, well, so yeah, you're not so dying a bunch of hair that you don't need to dye. Yes. Yeah, so it really depends on, like, so what he's talking about is I did um, this same dog, like a horse. I was going for a five tail, so he had boots and stuff too. He actually had the uh, black tail, which is part of the reason I kept him black for this because. Anywho, I did him all brown on his body because I wanted him to look like a pony, and I thought to myself, man, I'm using a ton of dye, and I'm just going to shave this dog short. Like, I don't know why I'm doing that. So, that was kind of silly on my part. I did, he did have this, was all a mane, so that was a nice black mane, which is partly why his um, mullet's not longer, because I obviously had to chop the black off, because um, there's no way it was going to go yellow after that. And... So yeah, something to keep in mind is if you're doing a short haircut um, and you know you're just doing one color all over, change it up. Why not? Why not? That's like save your money and your dye. I feel like it's a lot. How many bottles of black did you use? Lisa asks. So for this pattern in general, I have not even used the full. Sorry guys, that was not easy. Um, I haven't even used this full. Um, and we, as you can see, we have some left over. So I probably use, well, you can see how much I use. I haven't even used half of this thing. But again, he's shaved with a 10, so he does not have a lot of hair length. Um, I would say for the tail and the feet, I probably use, you could probably get this whole dog done with the black with one of these bottles, one of the permanent. So whatever you use with this, use with this too. Just keep that in mind um, and mix it up really well. And yeah, I would say that one whole bottle would get this tail, these boots, and the pattern done. And you'd be set. But he has really short hair, so that's something to, to keep in mind. His boots aren't going to be that long either. Um, and his tail's not super long either. So all something to keep in mind. 
Now these are Chinese crested. Uh, he's a powder puff, so coat wise and stuff, it holds color very well. He's a white dog naturally, as you can see, he's got some darker points, but his body is totally white naturally, except for this one little color back here. Um, but even that takes the color pretty well. You just can't notice it. So. Okay. The Tiger King, what's that about? What do you mean? It's the best! I'm just kidding. It's very 2020, is really what I was going for. And I feel like 2020 has been low. And this room is, in my eyes, low. So, do you condition afterwards? Yes. Before or? No, so I talked about that earlier. I said I will. Do you want it? Yeah. Uh, I'm saying before you do the uh, glitter? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm not worried right. about the glitter sticking because it would be one thing if I was doing a leave in conditioner, but I'm not. I'm going to be doing it. Okay. I'm going to rinse all this black off, do a regular conditioner, leave it in for like. 30 minutes or 30 seconds to a minute and then rinse that off um, and then we've got glitter gel as well as glitter to sprinkle on him if I wash him a little bit later um, and we're just going to put that all over and I am like that looks so cool in there <laughs> oh, I'm easily news sorry guys <laughs> life's all about the little things so um, yeah I love how this blonde turned out. You look so rad, dude. So rad. We need more questions. <laughs> yeah, fire them at me, man. Even if they're dog show questions, I don't care. Um, I've been working with dogs my whole life. I love them, obviously. I show, we have a dog show this weekend coming up. And I will be showing Tiger and Husky, a couple of Catons, um, a Papillon. Uh, Collies and Aussies, Bernie's Mountain Dogs, a couple of those. I'm forgetting something, I know it. Uh, possibly a Golden Retriever, I'm not sure if she's going to show her or not, uh, but I normally do show her. And I'm trying to think of what I was going to have. It's going to be kind of a crazy weekend because it's just going to be my dad and I this weekend. So normally my sister's there too. Um, but it'll be fun. And his owner is usually there as well, but she will be doing her natural guard duty. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be kind of a busy one, but it'll be it'll be fun. We don't have a whole lot of dog shows up here, especially not with what is going on in the world. Melly asks, are you guys gonna wash him, or is he done already? So I will be rinsing him off, Melly, but I won't be washing him. Um, I'm just gonna rinse it off till the water's nice and clear. And then I will be throwing, this is just still processing right now. It's, the black has to sit for 40 minutes. Um, and so I started, it's already been at least 15 minutes. Um, but you want to go off of the last time that you, or the last place that you put the black on and then start your 40 minutes. So he's obviously been processing for a little bit, but not necessarily all over. And that's part of the reason that I like to do the inside of the legs first because it's like my dog's getting impatient for the 40 minutes that it has to process. I can rinse them off a little bit earlier. That inside of the leg is still going to have some color there and it's not that big of a deal if it's not super black. Because you also have to remember the shadow of the body um, is going to cast on there as well and make it dark too. So. I can't see. Uh, oh, actually I'm... no, I did not apply the color to dirty hair. I made sure he was nice and clean before I did it. Um, I have never done it to dirty hair. I just don't think that dirty hair lays like I want it to lay and something that's detailed like this, for one, I don't want my clippers to be doing it on dirty hair <laughs> because that just, you know, damages your blade. Uh, well, I should say it dulls your blade. It's not like he was really dirty to begin with, but I used a Kenshi 10 on him, which I feel like takes it a little bit shorter than your regular 10, just throwing out my two cents on that. Uh, so he's nice and short, but I bathe him and I like to do it on a clean dog. Uh, I feel like that is what really takes that color the best. And I don't condition until I'm like totally all said and done. I'm done with color. And then I want to walk up that hair follicle and pull that color in. Oh, what was JC's question? It says, is it hard to blend colors on dog's hair as it is with human hair? 
I don't know, because I don't do human hair. <laughs> um, probably not, because a lot of dogs have white hair. But I would imagine, yeah, I'm, I'm just not really sure on that. I think there, there's such a variety in human hair, and there totally is in dog hair, too. So, you know, a dog like this that's a white Otter Pup Chinese Crested, it takes the color awesome every time. I've never had an issue with his coat taking color. Um, something that's got more carrier coat, some of them, like I've done a Jack Russell, and we did, uh, just started with like a flame on the tail, and that took great, you know, because that's also a white dog, but it is carrier coat. So uh, we did a white Frenchie, I, I mentioned it earlier, and it was terrible at taking coat. I mean, we ended up dying that dog like three different times because they wanted this kid, or this dog was supposed to be Lilo to go, or no, Stitch, to go with Lilo for Halloween. And I was like, well, we're not letting them down. So we tried the Opoc blue, we tried the Crazy Liberty blue, and that didn't work. And so I went to Sally Hughes Fly, and I got to get a panic, which I've totally used before. It's, you know, it's vegan-based and stuff, and I have yet to ever have an issue with it on the dog. Um, but manic panic can bleed. So that was something that I didn't like when I was first using it. But the nice thing about just using blue all over a dog, it doesn't matter if it bleeds. So um, it's good to just kind of have a little bit of everything because you never know exactly how that hair is going to hold or if it will take color. I mean, once we use the Nana Kenny, it works great. You look like you have a question. No. no? Okay. Andrea just said, I don't have a question, but I do have a request. Oh, yeah. Can you please take nice pics so we can add them to the next creative grooming book? Of course. I honestly, I have a whole vision for a photo shoot with this dog and the tiger that I did yesterday. And hopefully it'll turn out great. Um, I'm kind of excited about it. So we'll see if it all comes together though. Laura asks, do you prefer Opaz or Crazy Liberty? Um, you know, that really depends on what I'm doing. I think Opaz does a great job um, with their dyes, and I love, love, love their black. Like, their black is awesome. It, I have yet to ever not have it take. I've used Crazy Liberty before, and on uh, some of the coats, it just didn't quite take like I thought it was going to be. Like, there's this dog that I do regularly for ears and tail, um, and she gets pink. And if I forget to trim her tail first, the Crazy Liberty won't take to the tail like the Opaz will. But if I do trim the tail, the crazy liberty will still take to the, or yeah, it will take to the tail if I trim it. So it's stuff like that that I've learned over time um, that it's good to just kind of be mindful of. But I, I love, I love Opaz, obviously. I want to get down Opaz here. <laughs> it's really great stuff. But I wouldn't knock crazy liberty either. I think they're both good professional companies. Um, and they do a good job. They are a different consistency. Opaz is more of like a liquid consistency, so when you're trying to apply it, I feel like it's going to go where you want it to go, whereas Crazy Liberty is kind of almost like a gel, um, or like a jelly, actually. Je it's in between gel and jelly. Um, and so getting that to like not clump around in certain areas when I'm doing detailed work is kind of difficult, uh, so that's something to keep in mind. As you can see, this went exactly where I wanted it to go, which is obviously super important. So, and I know it's not going to bleed, which is really nice. Um, I think that, yeah, they do a great job. Millie asks, the black you are using, mm -hmm. uh, are you mixing it with something else? No, so this black, um, that's a good question. The black itself comes with two pieces. So this is the box that comes with this. This is called the Super Black or Super Black or Super Noir. I don't know if you guys know about that. I also have it here in French. So anytime there's French, I love it. Opaz is also in Canada. Um, anywho, it comes in a box like this because inside that box is their number one, which is this this like a creamy um, stuff that comes out, and then this is like a liquid, and that's called just number two. Um, and you mix the two together in a one-to-one -one ratio. So however much you use of this, you want to infuse of that, and then mix it up. It starts off white in color, but then as time goes on, it obviously starts to turn this black color. And uh, so it's it's good to keep that in mind when you're just getting started, because if you're doing this on a white dog, you're not going to exactly see where you put it right away because you're basically putting white on white. So give yourself a little bit of time, take your time. It's easier as this has processed a little in the cup to see exactly where you're putting it. 
Um, and that's something to be mindful of while you're working because it's really easy to get carried away and be like, oh my gosh, well, I didn't even see that I put that there. You know, It doesn't take long for the process either. I mean, we're talking like five to 10 minutes and you can start to see a color change on the dog, which is great. But if you're like, all of a sudden, may, maybe you painted a bunch of stuff before it, so you're really fast at painting, um, but you didn't quite notice where you put it before, and it's, it can catch a bunch of things. So just keep that in mind. Again, one to one ratio, super black. All the colors I've used would be Innocent Blue. I did two different mixes with this color dilution cream. About one drop of this, um, and I say drop because it is pretty liquidy, into a cup with enough of the color dilution cream to like fill the cup up, um, up to fill the bottom of the cup up and then mix it around really well. Do the same thing, but like two drops of the Innocent Blue because I really wanted to create that like shimmery look, especially once we get the glitter on there. Um, to give the detail of this jacket because the jacket is like a sequin jacket. So it's capturing light all over and um, to help do that, we, we needed some different tones underneath that, that black. So I apologize for the barking dog in the background. It is windy here today and we are in a build, metal building. So they hear everything. And then that. Um, and then I, it's hard to see, I know, because of the spacing, but we have some loyal brown for his mustache, he's so cute. Um, and something like that, you know, when I did this, I, I did it a couple, few weeks ago, so if you want to watch the video, it is in the group. But I put my hand like this, you know, so I could pull all of this hair forward, and then I actually use the same, same little brush, and I start here, and I just go away from his nose. And that's what we did today, so. Um, he was actually really good for it. I thought he's like, Come on, man, I've already sat still. But I, yeah, I just keep my fingers, you might even want to put on fresh gloves when you go to do something like that because obviously I have black on, it's dried by now, but if you're not paying attention, it's always good to just have some extra gloves, maybe then they can remind you, hey, like, change your gloves, you're gonna get black all over your dog. Um, but yeah, I just kind of hold this in front and then I even can come behind, you know, like this with a brush and brush it forward away from his face. And then by holding his face too, I know he's not gonna lick everywhere, which you don't want him to lick this stuff and eat it. That's my little uh, Joe Exotic. Did I get to meet you? Your Joe Exotic show dog? Yeah. Go in the ring like that? I just need a Carol Baskin now. Oh my gosh, I saw a really awesome creative Halloween costume. A friend of mine did. And she was Carol Maskin. And she had a face mask on and wrote Carol Maskin on her. Face mask, it was pretty awesome. I was like, genius. Why didn't I think of that? So, yeah. I love how this looks, guys. I'm so excited. Thank you, sir. Oh, uh, how much are you using of both? I think she's talking about the black and it's half and half. Oh, yeah. Yep. Half and half. One to one ratio. It's always good to follow the directions. Um, I do know that, like, some of the old pods, I think they even tell you to do it on. Oh, it says shampoo and blow dry, shake well before it opens. That's another thing. Make sure you shake up your color. Black, obviously you don't want to do that because it's coming in this tube. This tube is like so creamy, you're not gonna do anything by mixing it up. Um, this you could probably mix, but I don't think it's gonna separate like this color. I always mix these up before I go use them. Um, so you just shake them really well. And yeah. I always follow the directions though. Yeah, this is shampoo and blow dry. Mix well with number one with number two with the ratio of one to one. Apply the mixture on the coat and leave for 20 to 30 minutes. Oh, well, it used to be 40 minutes. Hey, that's cool. We're almost ready. Yeah. Less than five minutes, guys. That's exciting. <sighs> Any more questions? I will try and take some pictures when this is all said and done. Um, and show you guys what it, the final result looks like. And um, afterwards, I'll comment with the picture of oh, what yeah. we used for inspiration. Yeah, for, I don't know if you guys can see that in here, but it is. I do constantly like to keep um, what I'm going for in my mind um, as a visual aid. I've got my iPad, which is actually what I use to process credit cards, so it worked out great. Um, 
but it's good to just con constantly reference. For those who don't know, uh, Hector is the most recent. Yes, he is. That's where you can see his rainbow look. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you, Chelsea. Doesn't he look so good? I'm so excited. I love seeing it on there. I can't wait to see it with the glitter. It's going to yeah. be awesome. Yeah. I hope it translates well onto the phone. That is a worry of mine. Yeah, you probably won't be able to um, see it as well. So I might have to, I'm not quite sure how, how that's going to translate. But I know it's going to look cool. So <laughs> hopefully it looks cool to you guys too. And we're not just here like, well, trust us. It looks amazing. <laughs> Uh, Melly asks, how do you establish the prices for customer for jobs like that? Okay, so I've seen a lot of variation um, on how people price this kind of stuff. Uh, keep in mind to charge your work. So if this is going to take you a long time, um, charge for it, you know. But on the flip side, I am the kind of person that I'm not going to charge someone if it doesn't turn out like exactly what they want. So, you know, obviously I really like how this is looking and this would probably be like a $200 job for me. I'm in Alaska, so that's something to keep in mind too. Can you see that? Um, that, Hector, I love you. I do. I'm just going to put it over here so that they can get you. I can, yeah, I can move. He's getting excited. He's like, I'm the war coach. He said five minutes, I speak English. <laughs> um, anywho. It, so an average haircut of, for his size is like 55, um, maybe to 60. You know, if he's in good shape, it would be more like 55. And it, he only takes me like an hour, hour and a half um, for start to finish. But if I'm doing a dye job like this, I'm, I'm going to say easily $200, maybe even $250. Um, and this is a small dog. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, this, is, this has been done in two sessions. So that's something to factor in too. If you have to do it a couple times, you know, charge, it's not your fault that the coat's not taking it, but like, for example, what I was talking about earlier with that stitch dog, if that didn't turn out, if I couldn't get that dog to be blue, I would not have charged them. And that's just how I roll. That's not for everybody. Some people are still gonna charge because they tried. Um, I just don't, I can't do that in like good faith, so to speak, um, because, you know, when I'm doing something that's, fun like this, and I would just would have felt awful if I kind of ruined that little girl's Halloween plans, you know, um, because she was Lilo and she needed her stitch. So thankfully the customer was really understanding and gave us the time to be able to figure it out and what was going to work for that individual dog, but it's always good to communicate that stuff to your customers, that there are no 100% guarantees that this will work. Um, you know, you just have to reassure them that you're going to do everything in your power to do the best you can and um, just try and try and plan it out the best you can. You know, I have a dog that's coming in in December for a cool Christmas room, um, but I'm going to need her to come in. I haven't seen the dog in a while. She does a great job maintaining this dog, but I'm going to need her to come in and so that I can make sure that the hair is where I need it to be for this creative room that she wants me to do because I'm going to be doing some coat carving and stuff like that. You know, we're talking about the whole jacket and everything uh, for Christmas. So uh, you just gotta plan it out with the customer, give them an idea, and don't sell yourself short. But also know your limits. You know, don't work on a dog that's not gonna tolerate it. That's just a nightmare for everybody involved. And it doesn't turn out right. You only wanna do the things that you know you can achieve. Or like, just dip your toes in with something simple, like ears or tails. Ears and tails, um, I charge like 45 if I'm doing both of them. It depends on how much hair we're talking, it depends on how big of a dog it is. Um, and if, you know, it takes two of us to hold the dog, that's a factor as well, because that's two people that they need to basically pay for. Um, so those are all good things to keep in mind while you're trying to price your things out. And I, I make sure that I'm just very clear with my customers, nice and lucid, like, okay, there's a lot of different factors here. I always try and price as fair as possible. If your dog is awesome, then, you know, this is probably what it will be. If it takes two of us, and I don't, you know, I don't try to phrase it in a way like if your dog is a stinker, um, but it's more like if it takes two of us, because that's really what it comes down to monetarily speaking, is you, you're you taking away the time from that other groomer who's now helping you, they could be making money grooming their dog or grooming whatever dog. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. I own two shops, and so, you know, it's a constant juggling of employees and schedules and everything like that, and when you have a creative groom, 
on the books, it's very good to have that day be a little lighter because you never know if you're going to need help. Um, and something, you know, sometimes you just have an off day. So it's always good to not push yourself too crazy and, and have an extra set of hands for helping hold. I think we're time now, yeah? Sure. You got black on your face. Oh, I do, huh? Yep. Nice. Like, like all over? Uh, just right on your temple. <laughs> Lisa asks, does the color dye the skin when the hair is shaved short like this? If so, does it fade quickly? Um, so, I would say yes, we are dyeing the skin at this point, uh, but I wouldn't say it fades quickly. It's more that it's gonna grow out and you're gonna notice it because when you've done it that close to the skin, you're not dyeing as much hair as if you had done longer hair, which would pull the color. Does that make sense? Um, so you're, you're dying less hair, which means you're going to see it grow up quicker. But like these boots, I did them three weeks ago, and you can't even tell if I just made it at all. And he just got it back yesterday because I re-dyed his blue. Which actually, it still looks pretty good after, what, two or three weeks of time, so. Oh, guys, he looks so cool. I'm going to try and get this black on my forehead. Did I get it? No. Huh. Well, one thing to know, the black is worse. It's like right here. <laughs> no, you just made it worse. <laughs> Hopefully Lisa heard your answer. Oh yeah, I apologize if you didn't hear it. Um, let me know if you didn't hear me, or if you did hear me. Either of you are. Probably if they heard you. Well, either one. Because if they didn't hear you. This is the conditioner. And I'm going to put it on, rub it in. <laughs> and I'm going to just condition his tail too, because why not? Um, and we'll do the boots. What kind of conditioner are you using? Um, this one's called, I'm kind of limited on what I can get up here in Alaska, um, but this one's made by Groomer's Edge, Double K, I think. Yeah, Double K Groomer's Edge is called the solution for detangling and conditioning. Um, I really like it for getting it on in there. Um, I have other conditioners, like I've got Hydra, but I, I reserve the Hydra, my more expensive stuff for my show dogs um, because it's hard for me to get stuff up here. You know, I have to pay for shipping for everything. I actually picked it up at the Groom Expo in Pasadena in February and I flew five gallons home, guys. I was pretty proud. <laughs> there were two of us. I brought my manager, my first shop with us. And we loaded up our suitcase and the loot that we got was pretty amazing. So you'll see when you put this conditioner on that there's still some color that's gonna come out a little bit. That's totally fine. We just want to make sure that we condition those hair follicles and heal them on up. Oh, Lisa did hear your answer. Oh, awesome. Did it make sense? <laughs> That's probably a good question, too. Yeah, I can. Okay. And then 
then I'll answer questions. You can see there's a little bit of grow out on the black from when I did him a couple weeks ago. But when he's all dry, you can't. Did you see that one? Uh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but when he's all dry, you can't tell. Same with the boots. Melly asks, how much did you wait to rinse him? Um, so, <laughs> back in the day, the old pot of you used to have to wait 40 minutes for the super black, but I just reread it today. <laughs> it said 20 to 30. So we waited 30 minutes. Um, because by the time that I decided to read it, it was about close to 30 minutes. We also always kind of erred on the longer side. Yeah, I always have, you know, with the dog that allows it. Yeah, there are some people that will wait until the dye dries on their hair. Um, I know that I've heard a niece Hayden say that. And I don't know if you guys follow her on Instagram, but she's amazing as well. Um, she does some really cool dyes. And, um, well, from what I've seen, they're mainly on the press too. So shout out to her. Um, I mentioned it earlier, but I have tried to revamp my Instagram to show you guys my cool room. So if you want to follow me on there, it's I'm at or my handle. Sorry, I'm learning all this stuff. It's at the Groomer Gal. Um, and then look at you. You look so cool. So yeah, feel free to follow me on there. You can find his rainbow dye on there. Um, before he got all this hair stuff. Chopped off, and he's been a pony before. Um, I really want to do him like a panda because I think that would be so cute. I just love a panda. Maybe a red panda. Um, They're cute. Yeah. So I'm going to draw the noose. Doo -doo. And I'm going to get Trevor all set up over here at the table. I don't know if you guys have seen the Schoenbau tables that light up, but I bought five of those because they're amazing. Um, I oftentimes like to sling them through the shoulder because it's safer for them. And I think more comfortable than just having them around my neck. You look amazing! <laughs> Good boy, Hunter. Okay, so you can use the stand dryer with them too when you're doing here. Okay. Y'all can see me, and then Trevor is going to take over. Oh, you can press the little button on the front, Ooh. and it'll switch to the front-facing camera. Front-facing camera. Okay, hold on, guys. Sorry. Which little button? Uh, it's at the bottom of the screen. The big one? Uh, no. The M? No, no, no. None of those. Okay. On Sorry, guys. The screen. <laughs> this button right here. Oh. There. Oh, oh. Okay, sorry, he's got this fancy gimbal thing and it's tripping me up. Okay, there we go, awesome, okay. Ooh, okay, we're going on an adventure and I'm gonna go into my back room so that um, we don't have the noise that would otherwise be cutting in here. Okay, this is my kennel room. Okay, so fire your questions away. Um, oh, how much did I wait to rinse him? So. I think I answered that question earlier. It was, normally I would wait 40 minutes for the super black um, because that's what it used to be back in the day. Oh, I did get black out of here. <laughs> um, but I guess they've changed their formula and so now it's only a 20 to 30 minute wait. So we waited for 30 minutes um, because by the time I realized to read the directions, uh, we were pretty close to 30 minutes. So I figured, well, we'll just wait the full 30 minutes. Um, because why not? I'm not in a rush. I love hanging out with you guys. There's 27 of you, which is amazing. Um, this is my second time going live, so I was pretty nervous about it, but I'm happy to be here and answer any questions that you have. 
Um, like I said, he's gonna dry on Hector, and then when Hector's all said and done with the drying, we're gonna do um, all the glitter and really like make the look come together. He just like turned it off. So I'm wondering what happened. Everything all right? Yeah. Oh, the stand dryer? Oh, <laughs> okay. Sorry, just gotta check in. He's not exactly a groomer, but he's a great camera guy. So anybody who needs some camera stuff, he's pretty awesome. Hello, Christine. Um, okay, so I am located in Alaska. I have two salons, one in a town called Palmer and then one in a town called Wasilla. They're like 15, 20 minutes from each other. Oh, thanks, Lynn. Um, and yeah, I just opened up this location. It was already an existing grooming shop and this is actually where I started grooming over 10 years ago and learned like pet grooming. I grew up in the dog show world, so I already knew some grooming. <laughs> and, um, but pet grooming was totally foreign to me. Um, I never really used clippers. Everything I did was with scissors in the dog show world. So learning clippers was quite the experience. Uh, I worked with this wonderful lady. I was still a teenager, I was 16 at the time. And a dog show friend of mine asked me if I wanted a summer job, which I had normally worked at our wildlife center during the summers, um, but something closer to home because that wildlife center was two hours away. And uh, so something, ooh, ooh, ooh. okay, I will answer that question in one second, Millie. Um, but something that, you know, was closer to home and like kind of what I already do was great because I knew how to bathe, I knew how to dry a dog. Um, I could trim feet because I had collies and Aussies, um, but I really didn't know clippers. So. I learned from an awesome lady who's like my grandmother and um, now I'm back here and I bought this shop from her. So it's kind of cool how it's come full circle. Um, I love how small this grooming community is. It's taught me so much. I made so many connections um, and learned a lot of things from different people. So, okay, Melly, back to your color. Um, I just started, or I'm just starting this world. I already did some tails and ears, but would like to do some designs. What would you recommend me? Okay, so one of the first designs that I did that was pretty easy to get a full on look is the panda. Um, and I actually used pet paint for that because we did it on one of my girls' show dogs. It was a Sammy, which is obviously a white dog. They have long hair and pet paint works that you can just spray it on the dog. It's like spray paint for dogs essentially and it washes out with water which is really awesome um and that's super simple um on a long-haired dog especially uh, but the panda is nice and easy because it's it's a pretty simple design you know you just do the legs around the shoulder um around the head that can be a tricky area um i've seen a lot of people not quite sure how to get it you know close to the eye or like this is obviously the eyeball, you know, they go way out here. I mean, you can, there are ways to get it a little closer to the eye. You, you don't want to get the eye by any means, um, but using something like a Q-tip, I find helps a lot, or a cotton ball, which is what I did. When I did the pet paint, I sprayed it on the cotton ball and then just kind of dabbed it around the eye so that I knew I wasn't going to get in the eye. I didn't want to spray an aerosol, obviously, around an eyeball on the dog. But a panda, I think, would be a great way to get started. Um, and it's a good, nice, full groom. Something else you can do is just doing like something on a body on a dog. Um, a few years ago, I did the Grinch for Christmas and that's a super easy one because it's just the jacket. So I did like a red jacket on the body all the way down to um, the, I would say about two thirds down the leg. And then I did the head that like, oh, which color is it? I think it's like a lime green, but you could, I might've mixed green and yellow together to get like that Grinchy green. And I did it on the head and then the feet and the tip of the tail. Um, and it was awesome. Like it's a full groom. It's super simple uh, because there's not a whole lot of detail. The biggest thing you want are nice crisp lines on your end. So start off in like the middle of the body and then work your way out into mo the more detailed areas where you want to have that partition between the jacket and then the other green color that you're going for um Cicely or Cecily that's great your work's good too thank you I'm learning how to become a groomer wish I had the opportunity to work beside one of you guys I started a bather at PetSmart that's awesome honestly bathing is the beginning um the more you can take in the better and I will say the one of the most powerful tools that I've seen in grooming especially as of recently is Instagram um, Facebook is great too. Like this group, Opaws, obviously there is a wealth of information. And I think with time, Opaws is doing a really good job at trying to connect groomers together and 
spread that wealth. Um, you know, obviously things are really kind of weird with COVID and people trying to figure out what to do. One of the other things I would normally suggest is going to the grooming expos, but there's kind of a hiatus on those. They're still doing things online, which is great. Um, but there's nothing quite like when you get to go and see it in person. So there are still classes that you can take, um, but a lot of groomers I've seen on Instagram are just like, hey, follow me for, you know, I'm gonna be doing this little quick video on and showing you how to do whatever, whether that's trimming a foot, um, something simple, that's a great way to get started. And the more you can watch, the better and more experienced you will become. You know, there's nothing that compares to putting scissors in your hands and doing it yourself. But I think a huge part of grooming that people don't realize when they get into it is learning how to handle dogs. So if you can just watch other groomers, how they manipulate the body on a dog and, and that kind of stuff, I mean, that's invaluable. That is something that it can't just be taught to you. You have to learn it for yourself. So watching other people and just like taking it all in like a sponge is the best thing you can do. Um, okay, the name of the spray, sorry, Millie. The name of the spray is called Pet Paint. Uh, again, I live in Alaska, so it's been really hard for me to get more of it um, because it's an aerosol. So shipping has kind of been a nightmare, but it is called Pet Paint. And I've seen some pretty cool dyes. Like one of their advertised pictures is of like a, a white pit bull or boxer. I'm not quite sure what it's supposed to be. Um, some kind of mix, I'm sure. And it said, marry me with a question mark. So I thought that was really cool. Um, and, and it's good. I mean, it's super fast. What I charge for something like that, and I have stencils for it, is like five or 10 bucks per thing that I'm doing on the body. Um, uh, that was one of the ways that I started advertising creative grooming um, because it's a cheaper way and time-wise, I mean, it takes hardly anything to do some spray paint on a body. So I've done like hearts for Valentine's Day, um, shamrocks for St. Patrick's Day, and I like to use it on short hair a lot of the time because it takes less pet paint, obviously. Um, but again, it's super easy, like to do a panda on a Samoyed. You know, that worked out great. So that's something to keep in mind. There's all sorts of different cool things that they have out there for grooming creatively that they didn't used to have. Like I've seen Opaz, and I have it, um, but I have yet to use it, the Funky Color Shampoo, which is more of like your pastel colors, and it's it's literally a shampoo. So you put it on, I've seen pictures of people, um, and it looks super, super bright, and you're like, well, what did I get myself into? But it actually, once it gets rinsed out, is like a nice, pretty pastel color, um, which to me makes me think of Easter right away with all the pastels and stuff. So there's a lot of different options out there. Um, that I think, depending on what you want to create, how long you want it to last, all of that stuff, uh, there's some really good, good potential for options out there. I obviously got this all over myself. <laughs> and I had gloves on. <laughs> oh, I'm dork. Okay. What about the paintbrush from Paws? Do you think it will work the same as the spray paintbrush? Oh, from like Opaws? Okay, so the paintbrush, do you mean like the pet paint? I'm not quite sure what you mean, Melly, in your question. Can you rephrase that for me, please? Um, Cause the spray is like spray paint. So it'll wash off with water. But the stuff that I'm like, what I just did on Hector, that will be permanent. So that's not gonna come out until it grows out. Um, and it will do a lot of, yes, yes. Airbrush and ink will be a good medium. Yes, I agree with Christine. Thank you, Christine. Um, I have an airbrusher as well, and that's a good non-permanent option. Um, I think the hardest thing for me with the airbrusher is keeping a steady hand. It's kind of difficult to get your hand to stay steady. Well, I, it's actually not even that. It's getting your dog <laughs> to stay steady for an airbrusher because some dogs um, are kind of, you know, goofy when it comes to getting blown on. Okay, so the airbrush from Opaz. Yeah, so the difference there is um, I would say you actually get better concentration with the airbrusher than you do with the pet paint. Um, I kind of forget that Opaz has made that airbrusher because I got an airbrusher forever ago and I don't even think it was Opaz. Oh, oh, I think, are we ready? Okay, we're ready. Okay, you can go on the table. Sorry, guys. Um... But yeah, I think that that's a great idea. The airbrush would be awesome from Opaz. And then I think they have a whole variety of colors. I kind of forget, like I said, because there's so many, <laughs> so many options out there. It's almost overwhelming. Um, okay, so he is all set up. And I'm going to get all this stuff off the table. How about you take that while I'm talking to them? 
You are such a good boy, Hector. Okay, sorry guys. Um, as you can see back there, I have a lot of Opaz stuff because <laughs> it works great and I like to be prepared for anything. Okay, so I don't know if you can see it. He's wiggling around here. Come here, Hector. Come on, gimbal adjust with me. Ah, we have Joe Exotic, everyone. Okay, so we're gonna throw some glitter on him and get him started as soon as someone, my cameraman, gets back here. <laughs> um, he was rinsing off my brushes. I'm giving him a hard time, but he's being wonderfully helpful. Thank you. Okay, Hector's so excited. Okay, switching it around. Yep. Oh, the flashlight. Oh, okay, how did so, you do that? I don't know. Um, so we have Opaz's glitter gel. What? Nothing. Oh, I was just no making sure that it was off. Okay, so Opaz's glitter gel. Apply it directly. But... Dixie's not happy that you left her. Yeah. Apply it directly by hand or brush to head coat, really repeat, apply. That achieves a better result, avoid contact, not the eyes, which is new. Can be used on any color, so just walk it out once. Okay, here we go, guys. Again, you can use all of this awesomeness that is your jacket right now, Hector. Okay, so what I kinda wanna do is just like highlight I think I'm just gonna like, yeah. I'm gonna spread it on here and then like blend it on in. Oh yeah, oh yeah, this is so cool. Oh, you yeah, like a massage? <laughs> Caesar can hear Dixie, he's trying to talk back to her. <laughs> Since he's Alright, so I'm just kind of applying it it's and kind then of... rubbing it on in. Someone is so jealous. Super jealous. Oh, look at that! Does it look cool? Can you guys see it well? It looks almost like snow. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's definitely glittery in person. I can kind of see that though. It kind of looks like snow on my hand, I guess. But it's hard to translate it via technology. Oh, but I think once I throw this glitter on there, it'll really show well. Yeah, and this stuff just washes out. So it's something that'd be a good like one time use, oh hey, I have a Halloween party tonight or whatever. Um, which is a good option for customers because I'm sure they don't want. What, is there any question? No, Victoria goes, people are gonna think there's a bunch of strippers who live here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh yeah. There you go, yeah. Does that show up better? Yeah. Okay, so this glitter gel like has, it's kind of wet, which is perfect because putting this actual glitter on, it's like, it's giving it something really good to stick to. I'm gonna look like I worked hard last night. <laughs> Ugh, this is great. Andrea, I'm so glad you sent me this gel. Look at all that, you're sparkling Is that English? Oh, sorry, I said sparkly effect. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, you look amazing, Hector. I want to be you when I grow up. So yeah, I'm just making sure I get him all saturated. Oh, you look so cool, guys. Please tell me you agree, because I might just be really biased. And then, honestly, something that I, I might do, like if, if I was, you know, he was actually going to a party night or something, is I might take a little bit of hairspray. 
and spray it on him. So really like lock that in. <laughs> I am so happy. I wish the camera would inside of his legs. see it better. That totally looks like the jacket though. Oh yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't get the shimmer. Hector's like, ah, oh, get my good side. <laughs> it is so shimmery. I'm, I'm throwing it into his blonde hair. I'm too, trying to like well. move it back and forth. To get the shine? Yeah. It turned out so good. I'm so excited. Okay. Here we are, guys. Joey Dark. The Dark As you can see, he's very proud. Mm -hmm. Let's see if we can bust down. What do you think? Let us know how you think it turned out. I hope that this shows up a little better. Should I, I said that you can see it. Okay. Should yeah. I, you know, do this? Then you can get the color in there. Just, ooh. You can see it on your opa's uh, oh, jacket. Oh, yeah, <laughs> my hand. <laughs> see? Shim, shim, shim. Shim, 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 shim. Says, oh, look, I'm so cool. Oh my gosh, the glitter. <laughs> it went. So, yeah, there you go. And I think that took us, I mean, a few hours, but obviously I'm talking during it, so that makes a big difference time wise. Um, he's a good boy. He's so old. And if I had someone else, else holding, he would be way less wicked. He likes to snuggle. So yeah. He could snuggle with them. Yes. So yeah, there you go, there we have it. So we'll definitely take some awesome pictures um, and then post them in the group and stuff so you guys can all see. And I will try and get it um, up on my Instagram as well, which like I said, is at the groomer gal. Um, if you want to do this dye, Opaz has the whole set on their website, so opaz.com. Um, and you can go find the Tiger King value pack and order that and use the coupon code FUN at checkout and you'll get a discount, which is, you know, fun. Um, and yeah, I think it turned out pretty cool. I hope you guys enjoyed. And if you have any other questions, feel free to either message me. Um, you can ask him real quick. But um, I think he looks great for my Aussie. Yes, you do, 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 He's all proud. Any questions? Or are we good? No questions so far. All right. Well, we're going to take some pictures and make sure we post them and everything. And I appreciate you guys tuning in. Asking all your questions and just enjoying it for the ride.